Hey people, welcome back, and we are finally going to be doing some weapons training. So we're going to start off with unguided bombs and unguided rockets. Very easy stuff. Okay, now if you're looking for a quick TLDR on how to do this, it's very simple. You're going to press 7 on the keyboard in order to enter the air-to-ground mode. Then you're going to scroll through the different types of weapons you have by pressing D until you find the one you want. And then you're just going to find your targets, which are down here, and roll in on the target. When you see that solid line, you are in CCIP mode. Just place the pipper over the target, and when you press the weapon release button, you will release the bomb. The second mode is CCRP. This lets you take this circle, placing over a target, and then flying over the target. It will automatically release the bombs when you fly over the target. So I'm going to place my pipper right over this target, press and hold the weapon release button, and then I'm going to fly straight until it drops. There's the bomb. I can let go. And that's a shack. Here we are in the main menu, and what I actually want you to do is go to the Mission tab. Select the SC-25T, and then go all the way down to Unguided Bombs Practice. Alright, so here we are, and before we press fly, we're always going to read the briefing, so we know exactly what the situation is, where we're going, and what we're doing. Useful key commands are displayed right here. So what is going to happen is we're going to have to take off to the left here, uh, straight ahead of us right now, and we're going to need to turn around 180 degrees and fly towards waypoint 3, that's where our targets are. So let's go ahead and hit fly and take off. You should already be familiar with how to do this. All right, so just make sure your gear is up, you've cleaned up your flaps, and we're going to climb to a nice 2,000 meters at least, okay? Um, now, we are in, in route mode, so we are following waypoints, and we are currently following waypoint 1, but we need to go to waypoint 3. The way we scroll through waypoints is the left controls and tilde. Hit it once, we're waypoint 2. Hit it again, we are waypoint 3. Where's waypoint 3? It's right behind us. So let's go ahead and turn around in the climb and be gentle. We have a lot of bombs, we are heavy, and you can take a look at our AOA. This is about as far of a pull as we would like, and just continue to turn until we are facing the waypoint. Okay, so we are now facing exactly where we need to be facing. It's somewhere straight ahead of us. And take note, there is a river out here that cuts across. Uh, the targets are on the other side of the river, and they are located uh, exactly down below where the 32.3 marker is, right over here, right on that decimal point. Okay, if you are having trouble finding that, uh, you may need to turn labels on, and that is right shift plus F10 if you have labels on in your options. I don't, so that's not going to work for me. Uh, you may need to exit out, make sure you have labels turned on, and then I think right shift F10 will turn labels on or off. Next, let's go ahead and just do an active pause real quick. And that is left windows, left shift, and pause break. Okie dokie. So, now, we are still in en route mode, and what we need to do is switch to the air-to-ground mode. Very simple. Press 7 on the keyboard. Hey, we're in air-to-ground mode. Easy peasy, beautiful cover girl. Now, on the left-hand side, you're going to see a range scale. This range scale lets you know how far you are from the target that's on the paper, and that's down below us. And we currently have B on the right-hand side, indicating we have bombs selected. And we have these two tick marks indicating which station we currently have selected. Uh, not very informative, so we may need to take a look at our weapon display panel here. As you can see at the very top, that's our airplane being shown at the very top. Beneath that is a row of yellow lights indicating that, hey, the aircraft recognizes that there are some things attached to these pylons on these stations, right? And the green check mark lets us know which one of these stations we currently have selected. On the right hand side, you'll see BB letting you know that you have bombs in use. And if I wanted to scroll through these different types of weapons, because we have several different types, I would press D as in Delta. And this will let you select different stations. You'll note, though, that the outer stations are not selectable right now because those are our air to air. And that's a completely different mode that we would need to switch to. Not today's problem. So, uh, what bombs do we have today? So as you're looking at it, we have some heat seekers on the outer pylons. We have a four rack per pylon of these smaller bombs. Then we have this big thing. That's a CBU or a cluster bomb munition. I think um, they call it a dispenser. And then you have two more general purpose bombs here. Here is a list of all the different weapons that you have available for you for unguided munitions. All right, so we're actually going to work our way from in to out. So let's go ahead and select the big bombs here that are closest to the belly. 
All right, and the way I'm going to do that is obviously by switching with D. So I'm going to press D until I have those two selected. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and unpause now. So left windows, left shift, and pause break. All right, so there's two different ways that you can deliver a bomb. CCIP, which stands for Continuously Computed Impact Point, and CCRP, Continuously Computed Release Point. The difference between those two, very simply put, CCIP is your old school way of diving down to a target. You place the pipper on the target, you press the weapon release bomb, which is a uh, space bar, and that's it. It literally, the bomb hits where, wherever you've placed your pipper. It's extremely simple. The problem is that you need a very steep angle and enough altitude to make that happen. When we dive down, we're going to make sure to throttle all the way back, otherwise we may be over speeding. We may even need to use speed brakes. And we need to do at least, at least a 30 degree dive in order for the CCIP line to show up. Currently, we are not in CCIP, we are in CCRP. And I'll show you that mode later. All right, now the targets are to my left here. I've offset them a little bit. As you can see, there they are, because I'm gonna roll in to the left and do a nose dive straight down towards it. And I'm gonna need to do an aggressive nose dive to the ground in order for this to work. The reason why the CCIP line will not show up is because of how draggy some bombs are over others. Some weapons are so draggy that the weapon release point would be like down here below us which means that CCIP is almost impossible to use with. All right, here we go. We're going to nosedive. There's the line. And I'm just going to release it right over here. Yeah. There's the bomb release. Speed breaks in. Full speed. Boom. Direct hit on target. If you don't feel comfortable being that close to the ground, because it does require a bit of pullback in order for you to recover, do it from a higher altitude. Just know with unguided munitions, the higher you are, the less accurate your bombing technique is going to be. Let's try it again. We still have one bomb left on this side. Let's go back in. Try it from a little further away. And also notice, we are very fat and heavy, and our AOA is already in the danger zone. Because you're in the danger zone. And so don't be pulling too hard or that's gonna happen. Then you're gonna start stalling out the wing, okay? Be easy. You'll also notice you're gonna need to put some stick in to keep her straight after releasing a bomb because we are no longer uh, balanced. We have one bomb off, so we need to trim. So I'm gonna trim the plane out until she feels like she's stable. So I'm gonna roll in on the target. It's gonna be a little bit more shallow. Throttle back to idle. I'm gonna roll out. Notice that we don't have the line. We're not steep enough, but if I were to... There it is. I need to pitch down for that CCIP to show up. up. There is a pickle. Pull up. Pulling up. Speed brakes in. Boom. Direct hit on target. And pull out. That's what she said! <laughs> All right, so both bombs have been released. I'm going to need to retrim the plane yet again. And we currently have the most outer station, the next one selected, as we can confirm right here. That's the four bombs per pylon station. I'm going to select the big two bombs on the inside. So press D. That's our dispenser of CBUs. Press D again. That's our most inner bombs. Let's do a CCRP strike to show you how that works. And again, the CCRP is really useful for uh, really draggy bombs. But what it does allow you to do is designate a target from further away and then fly towards the target. And while you're holding the weapons release button, it will release the bombs automatically as you fly over the target and it will drop the bombs under you. And I'm just going to select one of these things by placing my pipper on one of the targets. And right around here, I'm going to press and hold and I'm going to hold it there. A circle appears at the top, and we need to fly so that the circle is at the top of the tail on the heads-up display. See the range on the left in seconds. This is seconds, not range. Once it reaches one, you hear the tone, and then it reaches the bottom, it drops the bomb. And we can let go of the weapon release, and then see how accurate that was. It's going to take a hot second before the bomb actually gets there, because it released it from further back. It's not going to be very accurate from the further away you are when you designated the bomb. What? pretty dang close. So this means you don't need to dive down onto your target, which keeps you safer away at higher altitudes 
from the target, which is an advantage with CCRP. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. This time I'm going to designate from further away, so again, it's not going to be very accurate. I'm just going to show you how it looks when you're not flying directly to the target. Here we are. I'm going to place the pipper on the target, roughly somewhere around here, right there. Okay, now we're going to keep that circle in the middle, but if I was like way off, you see how that circle floats? It's like, hey, get back to the freaking right. Oh, okay, fine. I'm, I'm holding the weapon release button down, by the way and bring that circle back to the 12 o'clock position as best as I can right around here here's the tone right here there's the release and this is only as accurate as you can fly over the target because remember these are not guided weapons the computer is just releasing this based on this very simple algorithms hey but well, you know we still got it pretty dang close all right, so that's bombs, and that's CCRP. Fantastic. So we know how to do CCIP, CCRP. Literally, this is how bombs work with unguided munitions. The only other thing that we need to discuss before moving on to rockets and ending this lesson is this panel right over here. Okay, so we currently have the most outer pylons selected, and these are the multiple racks over here. So what we can do with these is we can actually stagger them. We can drop these in pairs, meaning with the press of a button, I drop uh, two bombs instead of just a single one. And the way I would do that is by moving these things around. Okay, so with this panel over here, what we can tell the system is how many bombs to drop and if we would like some spacing between the bombs. So the rightmost knob will be the ripple salvo quantity, and the way we control this is with the left control and space. So if I were to hit that, you see that it scrolls through like that. And all this is going to do is say, hey, drop only a single bomb with a press of a button, drop pairs, so two bombs at a single press of a button, or drop four bombs with a single press of a button, or drop all bombs with a single press of a button. Okay? So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to select four. So I'm going to drop four bombs, since we have many of them, and we're going to also increase the spacing between them. Because currently on the left hand side, this is our ripple release interval. And what we're saying here is Salvo says, hey, release everything all at once. So here we would drop four bombs in one go immediately and they will all drop in the same spot. That's not really useful. What we want to do is we want to stagger them a little bit so that if you're a little inaccurate, at least one of the bombs should hit on target. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the spacing. We can do this with left shift and V or V. If I press V, I can scroll through and left shift and V will scroll back. So just remember V. That's it, right? And it does that. So salvo releases everything all at once. We don't want to do that. This is spacing in seconds. So that's 0.1 seconds, 0.2 seconds, 3.3, blah, blah, blah. And don't worry about this mode. That's for a completely different thing. Don't worry about that. So I'm going to put a 0.3 spacing between every single bomb. All right. So let's recap. I'm going to drop four bombs here with a single press of a button. And I'm going to have a spacing of 0.3 seconds between all four bombs. So it's going to go tick, 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 tick as it drops and it's going to make a line across the ground as we're dropping the bombs so what we want to do is target just before the actual target and drop a line of bombs through it so that at least one of those bombs will hit or if you have a convoy of vehicles in front of you this is a fantastic way of dropping a whole bunch of bombs in order to kill as many things along a convoy as possible and the best way to utilize this mode will be with CCRP. So let's go ahead and show you how that looks like. I have the targets right in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and unpause. So left shift, left windows, and pause break. All right, so there's the vehicles right in front of us. I'm actually going to put it in the center right here between these three vehicles. There it is. And I'm pressing and holding down and flying so the circle is in the middle here. All bombs have been released. And let's see that line do work. There's our vehicles. The group of trucks has been destroyed. Boom. Beautiful. Now I believe we got two out of the three, so that's awesome. And that's how you can utilize this to better use your bombs. 
All right, so that's our bombs gone. And let's go ahead and use our dispenser just to show you the cluster bombs. But it's literally the same exact technique we've been using up to now. And these ones, because they drop directly below, and they look like this when you drop them. They drop literally down below us, so we really do need to use CCRP mode in order to drop these things. But they're really not that effective, so I do not suggest that you use these. Okay, so one thing I will mention is after doing any bomb run and selecting the next weapon, uh, go ahead and just set the correct settings here or back to default. Um, before you use the next weapon, otherwise you're going to have some trouble. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a little before the target because of how these things work. So I'm going to select here, and I'm going to fly the profile until release. And you're going to see exactly why, because it starts off pretty far out. And let go of the trigger here. There you go. Interesting weapon, and it looks like it does a lot more damage than it actually does. We only killed one thing in that strike. So, we selected before all these targets, and it's still overshot quite a bit. So that's one of the things you have to look out for when using cluster bomb munitions. Again, I don't recommend them. Okay, time to do some rockets. These are unguided rockets. Now, we can do the same thing. Go to Mission, select SU-25T, and then go to Guns and Rocket Practice. As always, read the briefing. So, we have to fly out, and unlike the other mission, it's not in the same exact position that was over here. It's up here. We can take a look at the F-10 map really quick, and you'll see that we're going to take off from here, fly out to Waypoint 3, and it's located by a lake. Two different sets of targets. Okay, easy. Go ahead, take off, and head to Waypoint 3. Okay, we've reached our target area. These are the targets right over here. I'm going to go ahead and press uh, 7 to get into air ground mode, and we currently have rockets. We have several different types of rockets, uh, as indicated at the bottom right corner, as 13s, 5s, 24s, and this thing. Um, they all do basically the same exact thing, and it's very easy. Literally point the thing at the thing and shoot. There is one little sidetrack thing, though, and that is that you have a range scale on the left-hand side, and you have to be within a certain range in order to fire these things. So here's group one on my pipper, and here's group two on my second pipper. And we are in range now. You see the LA for launch authorized? Now we're gonna go ahead and squeeze the trigger, and it fires some weapons. And there you go. Now, as you probably noticed over there, the rockets really are a general area weapon, so uh, they're really not too terribly accurate, but uh, as long as you put enough weapons down range, you're probably going to hit your target. But their relative low blast radius is really what makes them uh, not that great of a weapon in DCS. So unless you get a direct hit on something, uh, your chances of killing that thing is pretty slim. Plus, if it's a uh, heavy target, like an armor target, you're going to need to use specific rockets that are designed to penetrate that. And you will have to actually hit it directly dead on. Uh, in those cases, the best case scenario is to use guided munitions. Rockets like this are best used for general area against soft targets. So again, just place the pipper on the targets right over here. You have to wait until that arrow is inside of that bracket, and only then are you in range to actually shoot. You can't shoot before it, you're just not going to hit anything. So right now, right now, right now, there you go. Yeah. See what I mean? So let's see if we actually killed anything. We did not. This is what I'm talking about. These are slightly more armor targets. They are artillery. And as you can see, even though we hit them dead on there with these rockets, uh, because of the type of rocket that we were using, it just didn't do anything. Against the second group, which are the more soft targets, those rockets would probably be better off. Uh, but now we have the S-24s, which are heavy rockets. You fire only one at a time. There's S-24s and S-25s available. These things, as long as you can get a direct hit on target, uh, will kill most armor targets. Uh, so you at least have a chance. But again, I would use guided munitions for that. Anyway, let's see if we can kill one of these things. Uh, you'll see that the range on these the window for shooting them is pretty narrow. 
So let's see if I can get a mark on this guy there. Boom. There you go. And it killed him with one shot. So as long as you're accurate, you can kill with these things. And that's basically all you need to know about rockets. All right, so we'll go ahead and practice these missions and uh, just get familiar with how to use that. And uh, the next lesson, we're going to start using guided munitions where we get to use this thing.